Do you hold on to things that you really don't need? Do you hold on to stuff that doesn't serve you, that can even actually cause you some stress and anxiety, even unhappiness? Do you hold grudges? Do you hold on to hurts? Do you keep stuff that you don't need? Do you maybe stay in relationships or friendships or jobs just because they're familiar? Things that you really know that you've kind of outgrown. Keep watching, because I'm gonna show you why you do this, and even more important, how to stop it. So what kind of things do people hold on to? Well, you know, they hold on to everything. I see clients who've got 30 years worth of stuff in their homes, and I worked with somebody once, and she said, you know, my house, I feel like it's put its arms around me, and I can't let anything go. It turned out, of course, that her parents died when she was young and her house had become a symbol of being her parents and so she kept everything, she couldn't let anything go. And it was a wonderful thing to see how she transitioned, cleaned out that house, actually moved to a smaller house and became so free. So we hold on to possessions like, well, I might need this later. Oh, well, this is the birthday card from when I was 18. This is the my wedding invitations, my 21st birthday invites, the menu from when I got married, the menu from when I gave birth to my first baby or my baby shower. We keep a lot of stuff, clothes, books, CDs, videos, audios. I actually just was in the loft of my old house and um, found boxes of cassette tapes and I just took them straight to a charity shop, boxes of videos that probably no one's even gonna watch them anymore. Why do we hold on to stuff? And what else do we hold on to? Well, it isn't just stuff, that's a big thing. Some people have so much clutter. You know, I've moved house in the last three years, three times, I gave up my London house, moved to an apartment, had 20 years of stuff in there. Then my LA house flooded, I had to clear it all out, go into a rental, go back. And each time I thought, wow, this is, nobody needs all this stuff. And I thought I was really doing well at decluttering, getting rid of stuff, but still seem to accumulate so much. Why do we do that? Well, one of the reasons we need stuff is because we often don't feel enough. And when we come from it with, I'm not enough, you will always need more. If you don't think you're enough, you'll need more of something, possessions, food, people around you, because when you have a lot of stuff, you think, well, I must be enough because look, I've got all of this. Not feeling enough is something that runs hoarding. It runs being a shopaholic. It runs many other things too. So we hold on to things because we think the more I've got, the better I feel. If I've got so much stuff, I must feel enough. And actually the truth is actually less is more. What else do we hold on to? We hold on to friends. Well, we've been friends since we're at school and we've been together for so long and I'm scared of letting this friendship go. I don't want to hurt someone's feelings. And what if I let them go and I miss them and I don't have other friends? We also hold on to jobs. Well, I don't love this job, but I've been there a long time, it has some benefits. What if I leave and I get another job and I'm even worse off? We stay in relationships. One of the saddest things I see time and time again in my practice is people who say, I don't love my partner, but you know, better the devil you know. We're so comfortable, they're like an old pair of slippers that I can't throw out, we're familiar. We don't really have any spark, but I'm scared of ending that relationship in case I don't find another one. I'd rather stay with this person and be lonely and uncomfortable than risk the uncomfort of not finding anything better. We also hold on to grudges. We hold on to hurt. Some people spend a long time practicing revenge, thinking of how to get back to someone who hurt them. And there really is no point in doing that. You know, if you're in the business of revenge, you need to dig two graves. So we've got to let go of grudges. We've got to let go of hurts. Why? Because they hurt you. Holding on to something isn't good. It's the most powerful words in the whole world are let go. Letting go is the very opposite of holding on. So how do we let go? Well, if you have a lot of stuff, Look at that stuff and really think, does this give me pleasure? Do I use this? When did I last wear these clothes? When did I last use this kitchen equipment? Do I ever use it? How much space is it taking up? How much of my energy is taken up in, in 
even storing this thing and who would get joy from it when I moved out of my big London house. I had a little wall outside and I put all my possessions on that wall and every day people would knock on me and go, hey, can I have that? Sure, that's why it's there. I put bikes out there, a set of golf clubs and people would knock on me and go, wow, can I have these golf clubs? Of course, that's why they're there. I had to put a sign out saying, please take me to stop people knocking on my door going, hey, is this really free? Yes, it's free. And you know, it gave me so much joy to see people taking china, taking books, taking clothes, taking possessions that I didn't need. It gave me joy. So think of who would get more joy than you. Who could you give that to? Go on next door and list your staff. I did that recently and some students came and said, oh, thank you so much. Oh, this is a table and a microwave. And they were so happy to have it. And I was so happy to be free of it. So list the things you don't want, give them away, give them to charity shops, because it will give you so much back to know that someone is getting joy from something that you really don't need and you really don't use. So put your possessions into three mental paths. I'm keeping this because I love it. I'm giving this away because I don't need it. Maybe I'll sell this one and I have some money to buy something that I prefer more. Less is more downsize, get rid of stuff. So getting rid of stuff is kind of easy because there's a formula. Put it all out. How often have I used this? Do I really need it? Is it giving me any joy? Can I let it go? Will I even miss it? And if you're not sure, put it away for six months. You know, I haven't even noticed that for six months. It's time to let it go. It's time to let someone else enjoy it. But what do you do when you're holding on to grudges and hurts and slights? Well, you've got to do the same thing. Let them go. The person that hurt you doesn't know they hurt you. They don't know that you're stewing and festering of something they did or said. And very few people wake up and think, oh, I'm going to hurt someone today. I'm going to diminish someone today. I'm going to be mean and horrible. That's not that normal. Hurt people hurt people. Wounded people wound people. We're all flawed people. I'm flawed. You're flawed. Everyone we're together with is flawed and flawed people are what I call flawsome. They have flawed behavior. Many times I work with clients and I say, look, you're not broken, but your parenting was broken. You're not flawed, but the way you were brought up was flawed. And I make them see the difference. You are not flawed, but you went through a flawed childhood. You're not broken, but the way you were parented was broken. And when they see the difference, they have a massive shift. And you can do that right now. You know, you know you get to change twice every single day. Once in how you think and the second in how you act. So look at the grudges you're holding on to and decide, you know what? I'm going to let this go. It's really not worth it. I'm going to forgive that person, not for them, but for me because I will not carry that around. It's like you've got a big backpack on your back weighing you down with these slights and hurts and grudges, when you dump them, when you let them go and you forgive the other person or decide, you know what? I'm just not going to give this any more energy. I'm not gonna allow this to take up space in my head. You benefit profoundly. So look at your grudges, look at your hurts. Take a few minutes and think, okay, that hurt me. Can I accept it? Can I let it go? Can I move on? Can I get over it? Or shall I keep it? Why would you keep it? It's not giving you anything except stress and tension and resistance. Get over it, let it go, move on, put it behind you. The past is gone. It's never coming back. You're not going back, which you are going forwards. Go forwards and do not take old grudges and slights and hurts with you because there's no point. They weigh you down. And they define your life in a negative way. Let go. We've all been hurt. We've all been slighted. We've all been treated badly at some stage. And yet we all have the power to say, I'm just going to leave that behind me. It's like the water of the shower I last took. It's gone. Why do we hold on to old friends? For the same reason. We think, well, there's some value here. I've had them in my life for so long. Why should I let them go? Nothing 
influences you more than the company you keep. And I know when I had cancer, I realized very quickly who were my friends and who weren't. And when I recovered, I didn't really see those friends much anymore that weren't supportive, that were actually negative. I said, oh, my friend died of that. It's really aggressive. I thought, you know, I, I don't think I should have those people in my life because they didn't give me anything. In fact, they took away a lot. They didn't visit me. And they tried to fill my head up with negativity. So I remember that expression, nothing influences you more than the company you keep. And I wasn't mean or rude. I just stopped engaging. They invited me to places. I didn't go. They sent me an invitation. I said, oh, I'm not free. I just stopped returning calls, stopped returning invitations. I removed the energy. It's like you can't play tennis with someone who isn't on the court. And I let those friendships go. When I let them go, what happened is I created new ones because nature loves a vacancy. Same thing in a job. Of course, I get it that you're scared of leaving a job that's given you security and certainty, but sometimes you have to think outside the box and think, I need something new and better. If you're in a relationship for no other reason than it's familiar, that you worry that it'll be too hard to go out there on your own, that you can't afford to divide the home up, Rethink that. You don't have to leave today or tomorrow, but rethink why you're staying, why you're holding. And remember, the most important words are not hold on, they are let go. In fact, I found most of my clients who held on always had constipation, often had tension, headaches, as they were holding on literally to everything. Don't hold on, let go. Here's a saying I love. You cannot find new horizons while clinging to the shore. If you want to know how to powerfully, beautifully, incredibly let go, please join my seven-day I'm Enough course. We will make this your reality and it will be easy. Check out my next video here. What lies beneath procrastination is nothing more than a fear of being rejected, a fear of not being good enough. And if you have that fear, you're in very good company. It's the most common fear in the world. So now you understand it. Okay, I'm lying